Back now to the U.S. exit from Afghanistan, the deadline to leave, and the situation unfolding at the Kabul airport. Let's uh, rejoin Mark Polymeropoulos, former CIA senior intelligence service officer and author of Clarity in Crisis. All right, Mark, we got our technical issues figured out. Uh, let's start with this meeting between the CIA director and the Taliban. Do you think there's some back channel negotiating going on? Well, you know, sure, and, and, and there should be. As a matter of fact, this is a tactical situation. You know, uh, you know, uh, CIA Director Bill Burns is probably the most experienced diplomat uh, in the entire entire you know the national security team, and so the fact that he has that experience um, is not a surprise. And a lot of times, you know, the intelligence community is called on to to conduct such back channels. You know, I would imagine he would have asked for things like an extension uh, past August 31st um, and some other assurances about you know the protection of uh, of U.S. forces there. But make no mistake, it doesn't seem like the Taliban's willing to listen. And all signs point to a withdrawal on the 31st, which I think is going to be really problematic in getting at the remaining Afghan allies. Absolutely. Do you believe the headlines then that uh, the Taliban is sticking to this deadline? Or do you think when push comes to shove, they'll give us a little more time if we need it? I, I think that they are. And, and I think that, you know, as, as, we, as we kind of take a look inside the group itself, the Taliban, you know, make no mistake, some of the, the, the leadership, especially on the political side, are trying to, you know, portray themselves as moderates and reasonable to the world. But the, the Taliban fighters, the military wing, are hardcore, and they want the United States out. So I think that there's, in effect, there, there's, there's in, in a way, an internal dynamics in the Taliban that force them uh, to push for uh, August 31st. And right now, we're kind of at this, you know, intractable position. Um, and again, you know, the bottom line, who's going to suffer the most? Our Afghan allies, who might number in the tens of thousands, who are still on the ground. Yeah, well, we talked in the uh, the first segment, Mark, about the president's uh, desire to get troops out before something happens. And we know that it's certainly unpredictable there. But do you think it's possible that the Taliban would take the risk of opening fire on U.S. troops, knowing what it would bring down, both figuratively and, and literally? Right. And so, so I think that that's, that's a really good question. It kind of begs to why we don't press them further on, right. on 831, frankly. It's, you know, the power of the U.S. military is there. This, after all, is getting two things. It's getting our, 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 first of all, our American citizens thought we're not even done with that yet, let alone our Afghan allies. So, so I think that, you know, I would have liked to see a, a, a more of an effort made to push the Taliban, perhaps even with international partners, with perhaps some of the allies even uh, 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 of the Taliban on the world stage. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't look like this happened. I mean, it looks like this 831 date is set in stone. And, and boy, we're going to see some things, and not, you know, not necessarily in next week, but in the weeks and months ahead on a humanitarian scale that really disturbed me. Right. Yeah. And it sounds also like they're going to have to stop the evacuation process at some point when they do shift to getting the military out. Congressman Adam Schiff talked a little bit about that. Here's a clip we'll talk after. Sure. Uh, I think it's possible, but I think it's uh, very unlikely. Um, it's hard for me to imagine all of that can be accomplished between now and the end of the month. Yeah, again, Mark, I mean, what we were talking about, as we said, just sort of rough math, if you use your fingers and you start talking, they said it's going to take several days to get the military out. So that's more than two, right? I mean, we're only seven away, so they're going to have to start this process soon, and it sounds like it's already underway. Right, and so, you know, I think, look, you know, the administration has made a calculation that, that you know, the, the risk of potential attacks on U.S. forces uh, is not worth the gain of of extracting our, our the, the remaining Americans and our Afghan, uh, Afghan allies. I mean, that's... That's pretty hard to stomach for me, for myself. Look, I know throughout kind of my network, the national security community is not happy about this, whether it's the State Department or the intelligence community, because we worked on the ground with our Afghan allies. In my view, we should do everything possible, uh, including, you know, potentially get into armed conflict with the Taliban again. Mm -hmm. There are Americans there. If we don't get them out now, we're going to have to try to get them out later. Yep. And so, you know, it's a, it, this is really a tough situation, but I, I think that we should have pressed much, much harder on the 831 date. The other thing people are talking about, Mark, and it seems like sort of unfinished business, and that's all the equipment we've left behind. And people are wondering, and it came up today in several of the news conferences, including the Pentagon's, I believe, about destroying this equipment on the way out so the Taliban don't have access to it. But it sounds like that's not an option. Well, well, I mean, it depends on what equipment. I mean, you know, at, at Kabul Airport right now, look, they're, they're going to kind of, you know, get rid of that stuff on the way out. I, I understand that. Um, but the remaining equipment around the country, I mean, I, I suppose you could talk about some kind of air campaign after we all leave. But I wonder if this is actually really uh, in, in, the, in, in the planning. Um, and, and let me just add one thing. Can you imagine if you're on that C-17, the last one out? You're a year as Air Force, either pilot or, you know, a, a, you know, a sergeant on board looking down at thousands of Afghans we have abandoned as they leave. I mean, I'm sorry to paint that picture, but 
you know, we talk about, you know, the wounds of war. I think we're going to have some moral wounds amongst our, 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 our U.S. military and even our diplomats there who have to be the ones to leave people behind, see it on their faces. And, and that's something that I'm, I'm finding really hard to stomach. Absolutely. I mean, it's hard to believe we're going to get this done in seven days, and it's hard to believe right. we're going to get everyone out who needs to get out. Hey, Mark, there's another thing we want to get you on, and it's because you have personal experience with it, and that's the Havana syndrome. You're still suffering from the side effects of your experience with this. And now the vice president, her flight from Singapore was delayed three hours, and two U.S. personnel were actually medevac in Hanoi out after suffering th these same symptoms. What do you think is going on? So it's, it's pretty extraordinary for, for a number of reasons. Well, you know, first and foremost, it's still happening. You know, we saw reports of uh, incidents at the U.S. Embassy in Berlin, of course, kind of what was almost a mass casualty attack at the U.S. Embassy in, in Vienna, Austria, early this year. And now in Hanoi, really strangely, or perhaps coinc you know, coincidentally, uh, or not so coincidentally timed, um, with the arrival of, of, of the vice president, this is still happening. You know, if not for Afghanistan, I think this would be a front page story, particularly because we had a, a US VIP arriving. So our adversaries continue to do this. Um, it is absolutely clear that we need, we need to move heaven and earth to find out who is responsible for this. Director, CIA Director Burns has pledged to do so. There's a new task force. But I think that, you know, this incident, what happened in Hanoi should be yet, yet again, a, a huge wake up call um, that our diplomatic personnel overseas are not safe. Yeah. Mark Polymeropoulos, former CIA senior intelligence service officer. It's good to see you again, Mark. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much.